and we waited for 15 minutes to be served. I began to get a little irritated and I was thirsty. And I tried not to lose my cool, but um, it was something to know that I wasn't being waited on. And so the manager came and apologized and as soon as the waiter came to the table, uh, the whole picture changed because the person that uh, was replaced replaced that other person was really a person that was full of servanthood. And they came and they asked us what we need and, and it was so gracious and that, that made a difference. Uh, I'm learning Dr. Um, his name, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the man that, that actually baptized me, Dr. Hines. Some of you remember Dr. Hines. Was he ever here? Yes. 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 Many times. Dr. Hines was a theologian man, a man of uh, great wisdom. Married my parents, so he knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. And actually christened me and um, was our pastor there at Jonestown Church of God in Jamaica, West Indies. Um, but he taught us the, the power of um, this message around waiting on the Lord and how waiting and serving the Lord uh, gives us strength to continue to move on and to continue to do things even greater. And so um, I, I realized that when I'm not waiting on God, when I'm not serving him, I get happy. How about you? It's like um, when I don't take the opportunity to serve his people, I begin to, to focus inward. Like poor me, and the pity begins to set in it. And I begin to feel uh, hopeless. And, and so the, the hope comes from, uh, uh, from serving others. I like what Paul is doing as he serves us. He called me this morning and said, do you need anything? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't need anything, but thank you. But he's serving God. And I know he may be tired physically in his body, but you all know Paul, that your strength is being renewed. You may physically not be uh, renewed right now. I'll take some time after this event and rest. <laughs> But, uh, but we, are, we are renewed. So I love the scripture. It says that they soar on wings as eagles. And I feel like I'm flying as an eagle when God begins to um, use me uh, in service to the kingdom. And they were running, not for weary, and they will walk in uh, faith. I love that text. Today I want to, want you to take your camera out. And I want you to take, a, 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 not, don't take a picture of this. But download this app right now, everybody. Just point your, point, point your camera and download this app. It's, not, it's, it's a free app, it's called Pause. Powerful app that helps us to take a journey inward. It, it helps us to, to kind of uh, uh, focus our attention on uh, our creator, God. So don't take a picture of it, just uh, hit the little yellow button at the bottom and you will pull up this thing called Pause. Download the app, and for the next 31 days, um, you'll see a, a request there to replenish. Hit the replenish button, and every day, I want you to take at least eight minutes and walk through the scriptures that they're about, they're going to give you, and um, and uh, and be blessed by the time of reflection. I'm telling you, this exercise of spiritual discipline has changed my life. To the point where I'm sending it to everybody I know. I have 14, 14, no, 21 young men, brothers, that are actually doing this now. And they said, Pastor, I had no idea how important it was for me to connect with God. So, so hit, the, hit the button that says replenish, and let's go for the next uh, 31 days. Let's, let's go on this journey together. Okay? You got it? If you need help, then he can help you. Oh God. <laughs> For someone that uh, ask if, if your neighbor is struggling, help help your neighbor. Okay? Help your neighbor. Alright, you got it? It's called pause. Powerful, powerful, powerful time of reflection and connection with God. Sometimes God uses a very surprising source to help you to connect and to express the your heart to him, whether it's whatever you're going through, whether it's grief, whatever the case is, but this is a really powerful tool. 
And so today will be your first day, and we'll go on this journey together. I did the first day. And so let's just assume that we're going to go on this journey together. Everybody got it? Yeah. Somebody still struggling? Hold out your camera. Download the app, and let's go on this journey for the next 31 days. You will not regret it. You got it? You got it? Okay, good. about uh, the services, and uh, it's one thing to, uh, to hear it, there's another thing to do it. I think, I think the miracle comes in the action, not in just the hearing, and the obedience in doing what God has called us to do in this season. So Nehemiah has set a pattern here that I think is a really powerful one. Uh, somebody read this text for me real quick. How about? It says to me, the wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. Yes. So Nehemiah is speaking here and he's talking about again the walls of Jerusalem being torn down. He's actually grieving right now. On your paper, pull it out if you could, and I want you to write this in. Mourn. What is mourning? It's expressing your hurt to God. It's expressing your hurt to God. A young man walked in my room office most recently last week and said my nephew was just killed. He, it's called it's the first part one, first step to restart. Okay? Or you really expressing your hurt to God. How many of you have ever ex expressed your hurt to God? What did that, what did that look like? Talk, talk to me. What, what, how did you express your hurt to God? How do you do that? Really? Tell them what's going on. Tell them what you feel. You, you are angry with God? You know, I expected him to, to respond to my needs and what good I did. You're upset. You're upset. I, I, I knew he knew that I was upset, so I just. You just did. Just interacted. Just interacted. David was honest before the Lord. He wasn't faking the funk. Uh, he told the truth. He told where his heart was. and. That's what God is calling us to do. This was what Nehemiah was doing. He was mourning. And it's okay to mourn. Don't feel guilty to express your hurt to God. This young man said, my nephew was killed in this accident. I'm hurt. I'm angry. I don't know what to do, Pastor. Can you pray with me? And I, we prayed together. And I said, I feel you and I understand. And uh, then he began to express the love that he expressed to him before he died. And God began to recount the blessings of the interaction. So... Uh, mourning is, is okay. Look at Matthew. It says, God blesses those who what? And they shall be what? Comforted. So you're not going to end with mourning. God gives you an opportunity to be comforted. He comforts you. He uh, embraces you. And here's the message. You are not in it alone. I love it. It says in uh, Psalms uh, 94, 19. Somebody read that. So when you're mourning, are you doubting? Mm -hmm. A little bit? Are you not enough faith? Maybe you're doubting God. How could you do this? How could you take my only child? Right? You doubt yourself. You doubt the circumstances. You doubt the pastor. You doubt everybody. And so there's doubt that comes in. God's saying, when doubt fills my mind, God is going to comfort me and give me renewed hope and cheer. Again, we're talking about strengthening the ecclesia. You are the called out ones. What happens when you're strengthened? God then gives you an opportunity to strengthen in First Corinthians. It says to strengthen and help somebody else. Man, when you are empty, can you really help someone? No, it's hard. And so uh, it's important that we uh, we take the time to do what Nehemiah did. He mourned. He mourned what was going on. So uh, look at uh, uh, Psalm 35b. Somebody read that out loud. Welcome. Say it again. We can may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. 
Amen. Trouble doesn't last always. Amen. You're going through it. If he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Amen? All right, so we may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I suspect uh, Nehemiah was, I hear, I hear somebody's trying to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's to be done alone <laughs> with the Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 10, B. Somebody read it. For when I am weak, yeah. when I am weak, it's in our weakness that we become strong. Somebody give me an example of that. When you were weak, you felt the strength of God. Anybody? Talk to me. This is supposed to be interactive. Yeah. I remember years ago when my oldest son was in a battle with getting custody of his children. Yes. The mother had taken them and gone off with them. We didn't know where they were. And I used to come home at work and just sit in front of the computer and just start crying. Lord, I can't imagine not seeing those children ever again. And I just kept, every night, and I'm heard the Lord say, you trust me or not? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course I trust you. Well, then stop the crying and trust me. Wow. And God did things that were nobody can understand. Even the Balaam told him, he said, I'll give you signals. And when you said too much, I'll <laughs> cut you off. And when you're doing good, I'll encourage you. And the Lord just worked all that out. Wow. So he acted on your behalf. Yeah. And it, when you came to the end of yourself, sometimes when God allows that to happen, when we come to the end of ourselves, that he takes over and he's our strength. He's our strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. He reaches deep into our soul and gives us the strength that we need. Number two, so not only are we mourning, Nehemiah not only mourn, but the Bible says some things only come do prayer and fasting. Some of you have been praying a lot. And I, and I love that. Keep praying, keep toiling on. This soon will come a brighter day. Keep praying, toiling on. But in the last uh, 40 days or so, I've been combining praying, fasting, and reading the scripture. And I can tell you, my, I mean, you would think a pastor would be doing all three. <laughs> but it, 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 I wasn't doing it all together now. So I say all together. Oh. And so when I began to pray, I began to fast. And to, fasting is shutting your mouth, not just losing weight. That's not the purpose. It's, it's shutting your mouth from eating and putting your flesh on the subjection of the Holy Spirit. And so when I began to fast and pray, it gave me an opportunity to focus my heart on God and on the things of God. This may sound generic to you, but I'm not sure that we're all practicing this discipline. And you're not experiencing the outcomes and the results of uh, what I would call unexpected uh, blessings. Well, I just believe God for the uh, unexpected as, uh, as we begin to fast and pray. But look, look at what it says here. Turn to me with all your heart. With what? Fasting. Weeping and mourning. Underline fasting. Underline weeping. And underline mourning. God is asking us to do all of the above. That combination is incredible. Somebody read with Colossians 2.23 out loud for me. And what we want to be happy. Colossians 2.23 is not there. Just read it out. Yeah. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, high self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. But they provide no help in conquering a person's evil Wow. Wow. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, higher self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desire. What is Paul talking about here? Anybody? He's talking to what? We're talking about food and all that. Say again? I think they were talking about food. Was he talking about Keeping the Jewish rituals of uh, various things. Right. So rituals don't really help you. Really, it's a condition of the heart that God requires, right? The submission of the heart, not just the rules, but that your heart and desire should be really. The Bible says that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So I love it. I love it. 
So it's not just practicing it, the rules, uh, but practicing it because you love God. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplication with fasting, with fasting. How many of you ever seen a breakthrough when you combine the power of prayer and fasting? Talk to me, Pastor. Some of my books have heard it already, but years ago, um, I was going through a set of physical illnesses which really did not allow me to stress myself at all. I couldn't fast, I couldn't step up beyond 10 o'clock without getting sick. Hmm. But there were some people in the church that were actually, that we would want to pray for, and I decided to take a risk to fast. I fasted for three days. Wow. Total fast, complete fast, all that, and drank water. Really. And uh, I was at a Promise Keepers convention in Indianapolis, and I came back from that event, I met in Anderson, lying in bed, and I said, wait a minute, two weeks have passed and I haven't gotten sick. At that point, it was every two weeks. Every two weeks? Yes, that okay. would be, that's a little over 30 years ago. Well, no, not, not quite, maybe 30 years ago now, that God miraculously healed me. And I, I went to my Jewish doctor, and I told him that I didn't, I didn't, I no longer was having this fever. He said maybe it was the fasting. And I said, oh yeah, it was the fasting, but there was something spiritual going on in the fast. Ah, uh, that's powerful. And you saw the results. I'm still, I'm, I'm still. And uh, you're still healed. Still healed. Still walking Jesus, in your healing. Jesus did it. Oh man, come on, give God a praise for that. Yes, sir. I love that. Great testimony. I, I uh, love that. First Chronicles 20, that makes you 18. Now set your heart and your soul to do what? Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. My soul, my mind, my will, my desire, my thoughts. Uh, and my emotions, what I feel is that I want to get close to God. First Chronicles 2019, set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord. So I'm going to restart it. The first thing that uh, he did, he, he mourned, he fasted, and he prayed. So uh, he prayed. He asked for help from God. He asked for help from God. And I love it. Uh, he says in uh, Psalm 28.1, Lord, my rock, I scream out. No, I call out for your help. In your groups, really quickly, name a time in your life where you called out for help through prayer. There's one thing to pray, Lord, bless me, thank you for the day. May the Lord bless me and keep me. And you get up and you walk away. Now, this, that's a different kind of prayer. I'm talking about the prayer that maybe Peter was praying when he was on the water. That's thinking, right? Or Nehemiah prayed when he was burdened with um, the, 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 the broken down walls of uh, Jerusalem. So take two minutes, we don't have a lot of time, two minutes and share time uh, when uh, you prayed and you called out to God for help. When was that, okay? And go. <laughs> To the father of the mechanic. Can't group. Is there some is there grief or uh, pain or something that you have not really mourned about? Grief you have taken that that you haven't really taken the time to mourn about. And, and why is it important not to deny that pain? So just, we're going to go a little deeper. Ooh, no, I'm measuring. I'm measuring. <laughs> All right, go, let's go. Talk about it, talk about it. Is there a, is there a, a grief that you haven't mourned? I don't think I've mourned my divorce. Okay, talk to them, talk to them. What, what do you not mourn? Why is it important not to deny your pain or your loss? Come on, talk about it. This is healing. This is healing. Processing grief is very important. Let me ask you to do me a favor. You know, 
I did not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up my clinical pastoral education at Anderson University. Pray for me, um, I have a class tomorrow and uh, in March will, will be graduation for this. But one of the things that they taught us was, I didn't realize that grief happens before the death. No one told me that. That you're grieving before the person even dies. And, and uh, especially when it's a slow death. But then there, 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 there's this, this thing that happens in your head and it moves from your head to your heart to your hands. And so when, when you're grieving, you're thinking uh, about the pain and you're thinking about the loss. But oftentimes, the grieving stops in our head. And we continue to think and thunder and remember, right? And I think God is saying in this season, he, he wants to move it from when you begin to talk about it and talk about the person and, and what they meant to you and the experiences that you had with them, it moves from your head to where? Your heart. And then when you begin to think about them and the great work that my father did, I'm using that as an example, because I, I don't think I grieved him properly. Big respect, right? He was in my head, you remember him? Yep, he's my friend from National Memorial. And uh, I was grieving him in, in my head and just, you know, and, and then it went to my heart because I began to talk to his friends when I went to Jamaica to preach their 99th anniversary celebration. And all of his friends came up to me and said, do you know your dad? I said, no, of course I know my dad. No, you didn't. And they began to tell me. He was a wonderful table tennis guy. He would smash us. And, and, it, and he began to tell me about the jokes he would tell. And I'm like, wow. And so I, I, it went from my head to my heart. And then he said, well, you know what your dad did? One of them stopped me and he said, he engaged me in this, I think it was this quartet. He did this quartet thing. And he loved to engage people in singing. And, um, and uh, that was his way of evangelizing them. So they would involve, he would involve them and pull them into this quartet. And all of a sudden, he was discipling them and they were beginning to love God and they were transformed. My uncle speaks of that. And so now uh, it's gone from my heart and now to my hand. I'm here in Cayman if my father would want me here. I'm here in Cayman, this is what my father would, would do. And he was so proud of me because this is a. And so it's gone from my head to my heart to my hand. What stops it from getting to your heart? You're stuck in your head. And what, what do you need to do? You need to begin what we just did. It's important. Get it out of your head and begin to talk about the divorce. Begin to talk about the loss of the child or the grandchild or the parent or, uh, and, 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 and then begin to say, now, I wonder if there's anyone else that got divorced that I can help. <laughs> and then it goes into your hands, right? And in 1 Corinthians, the Bible says what? You don't just, you don't just go through stuff. You grow through, write that down. Don't go through, grow through. How do you go through? It happens when it goes from your head to your heart to your hands. All right? So he, he, he prayed and asked for help from God. He mourned, he fasted. I loved it. Lord, my rock, I call out to you and I need your help. And then um, as he was praying, and we talked about this before, and again, this is reinforcement. Um, when he's praying, He's recognizing who God is. Write that in. He recognizes who God is. He's greater than your troubles. He's greater than your problems. He's bigger than your circumstances. He's bigger than the pain. He's bigger than the grief. He's bigger than the loss. You got to recognize who is. Right? Somebody just call out some names as to who God is to you. Who, who has he been lately to you? Somebody. Anybody. Rafa. He's healed you, right? Powerful. Oh, he's a doctor. He's very specific. <laughs> Another name. He's providing. Jaira. He's your what? My daddy. Okay, some people didn't have any daddies. So daddies abandoned them. Amen? Well, who else is he? What? Source of wisdom. He's my source of wisdom. That's powerful. What else is he? He's what? Oh, promise keeper. He keeps his promises. Not everybody does. <laughs> Provider. Provider. Al explain that to me. More than enough. Just not enough. He's more than enough. Oh, you got a testimony. We'll talk about that later. Anybody else? One more. 
What is, what is that? Faithful. He's faithful and true. Right. He cannot lie. It's not in his nature. All right? Recognize who God is. And so when you're praying, stop with that as you recognize who he is. And Nehemiah did that. We don't need to read the whole thing, but he says, he talks about, oh God, you're great. Your commandments, attend to your eyes. You're amazing. Right? And uh, he speaks of, of how he, and, and, and then he also, at the end, he confesses the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. So we, we he not only uh, 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 prayed and, and, and acknowledged God, but he confessed, and we'll go to that in a second. I pray that you will begin to understand how incredible great his power is to help those who believe him. Who is those? I think that would be, unless you're not saved the other day, online, he helps those who do what? Believe in him. Amen. If you're locked in, plugged in. Amen. Your phone is not going to work unless you plug it into the source. All right? But if you saw that he confessed who you are, what does that mean? He says, confess who you are. What is he talking about here? What are we talking about? I confess the sins be Israelites. What? To be truthful about your shortfallings. Right. Don't lie. He does know. What's the use of lying? He's omniscient. <laughs> He's all knowing, right? Including myself and my father's house have committed against you. Now, listen to, listen to what he says. I confess these sins. Uh, we Israelites. So he's talking about a, a nation. Right? So he's confessing this in the nation. Keep going. Including who? Me. Right? And familiarity. You familiar with that terminology? Confessing the faults of his family. How many of you have sins that your family may have committed that you? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, God, help us, right? What, what? Let's <laughs> make that in use coming out. So, he has put it against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not made the plans, decrees, and laws. So, he confesses his sin, the sin of his nation. We need to be confessing the sin of Cayman. North America, of Africa, right? We need to be committing to the sin of our parents. My father, my father was a workaholic. I, I, I'm confessing that now. And those kinds of things is passed on from what? One generation. One generation to the next. And who breaks the curse? Right. How do you break the curse? We're talking you through the process how to break the curse. If you want to carry on with workaholism, right? You, you, can't, you can't be delivered from something you don't, if you don't reveal it, you can't really, it can't be healed. God is saying, would you just agree with me? I know that you're a workaholic. I know that you are struggling with doubt and fear. I know that you're the foes and chosen. Would you agree? Yes, Lord, I agree. <laughs> okay, now we can go somewhere. Denial is not a river in what? Yes. <laughs> first step, it says, come out of denial into God's grace. The first step of the 12 step recovery program. I've already been through a 12 step. I was raised my own there. Okay. All right. I wasn't drunk. I was. I had all the issues. <laughs> first John 1 9, if you confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to do what? Yes. From all unrighteousness. Amen. This sounds basic, but I don't think we. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, practice the basics. Yeah, right. okay. And we're expecting outcomes mm -hmm. without practicing the blocking and tackling of yeah. spiritual discipline. Right? So, call on God's promises. Somebody said his promises. Write that in. Call, call on his promises. Uh huh. Call on his promises. Did Nehemiah do that? I would suggest that he did. He called on his promises. Right? When we pray, it's important to claim a specific promise from God's word. Um, how do you, how do you, what's the process for uh, claiming a, a process, or claiming a promise in God's word? What's a method? How, how do you do that? Take one minute and talk to your family about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah.
I'll come from your talking about. Uh, I'll choose a group. That group right there. Who's speaking? Virtually. We were sharing that sometimes we need to also remind the devil who we are in Christ. Remind the devil who we are. Very good. That's a good one. Reminding the devil who we are. Uh -huh. As to who we are. Who are we? Children of the Most High God. Who are we? Children of the Most High God. All right, I'm a child of the King. I am a child of. Ask for specific help. Sometimes we're not very specific in our asking. Someone just said, you know, we was looking for the promise of God, and I really wasn't, I really wasn't being specific. God, I need you to replenish the account that was uh, that was uh, that was taken away from us. I mean, be specific. Be specific in your request to Him. You have not because you're not specifically asking. Let me just add to that. Nehemiah was specific, right? He says, "Oh Lord." Let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and the prayer of your servants with delight and remember in your name. Give your servant success today. Be specific. I want success today. Not tomorrow. I want to. But by granting me favor in the presence of this man. Who was he talking about? The evil king that castrated the last cupbearer. <laughs> uh, and killed his brother. That's, I'm telling you, that's how evil this man was. I was a cup bearer in the king. So he's, he's asking God for some very specific things. He's asking God for some very specific things. We have uh, nine, uh, nine minutes uh, as we uh, continue to uh, wrap up here. Eight minutes, exactly. So here's the question. What specific things uh, can you pray for as you open your heart to God's direction? What specific things can you pray for as you open your heart God's direction. Talk, talk about yourself in two minutes. Be specific. Specific. What are you asking God for? God is asking you, uh, as he did Nehemiah, to uh, to pray. What does it mean to pray? Really, to start by recognizing who he is, not just for his hand, but for his heart. And then you need to fast. Some of you need to put down your plate. It may have medical benefits. It could have spiritual uh, spiritual benefits. It could it, it could it could have uh, uh, the ability uh, that to, to get your flesh under control. You got to fast, fast and pray. Uh, but it also got to really mourn. Some of you haven't mourned the loss. Or even have mourned over your sin. So God is asking us to mourn. And then to ask for his promises. And be specific about it. Right? Uh, ask specifically like Nehemiah did uh, to the king. Uh, he could have died if he asked the wrong way. He needed to make sure how, you know, Lord, how, do, how should I ask this evil king for the benefits that he's about to give me? And so God favored him because he was faithful to God. And he prayed at every time. Prayer is important, so do it. All right? Thanks for joining us. So what did you hear from God? What did you think? What are you going to do? One person, what did you hear from God today? Be specific. Be specific with your request. Tell me something. Tell him about the doctor. Oh, I just shared the group to say, when we go to the doctor, he can't uh, help us if, until he asks us the question. Where are you hurting? Well, how long you been hurting? And all these things before he can even help you. Well, God, I mean, he knows what we need, but he wants us to be specific. Just as we explained to the doctor, but it started here, yes. my time, it was yes. started, it moved here at the same time. And, and so, as we have to be specific with, with a doctor who does understand and who we tell him, but God will understand once we specific, then say, okay, we know, I know, God knows what we need, but 
you need to know what you need. Yeah. So we have to be specific. Right? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Sometimes, okay. sometimes God teaches us by, you know, those exact things. I gave you what you asked for, and you didn't ask yeah. for it specifically, so I gave you the answer, but it's not what you wanted. Not what you wanted. Not what you need. Gotta be specific. Can he give you something that you don't want that's good for you? I want to share this one. I, 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 as an attorney, I often find thorny issues that are hard to solve. Yes. And so I, that's when I get stuck. And I have to say, God, give me the wisdom to find the way where there appears to be a way. Wow. Yeah. Yes. The wisdom to find a way. A way in the wilderness where there appears to be no way. And so is this, you know, does that coincide with when I am weak, he's strong. He's strong. That's right. Which means you have, you, you, you can't see any way out. That's right. That's so now it's a very impossible questions that you have to seek answers where there doesn't seem to be an answer. So one of the promises that you talked about was, Lord, give me what? Wisdom. <laughs> right. I, I had a breakthrough just recently of that sword where you know trying to solve an easement problem. Yeah. And it solved. But, so, but it, because God gave it to God me as, as, as a breakthrough wisdom. idea. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. What other yeah, two minutes. Um, what do you think? What we, what what are you gonna do? Sometimes we think and we don't do anything. You know the yeah. Man, I can't wait to do this teaching. I hope you don't miss Wednesday uh, about discipleship and the power of action. We're going to talk about that. You cannot miss it. It's actually in your material. Don't read it yet. <laughs> but anyway, one, 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 one other. Is it in Star, Star Wars where somebody says, do, don't try or something like that? Do. Do it. Nike says that too, but I mean, there's a the same guy teaching his fellow to fly or, flyer or, or, or just levitate stones or something. <laughs> and he says, do. So, so that's the, the thing, is for us, we don't idea in the head, but then we don't get around to doing it. Um, doing, doing what you know you need to do is often harder than you think. So, you, because it's not just you involved, sometimes you have to. Eliminate other things and other people from your life for a short time to get things done. That's right. Like go in your closet, lock the door, clean the phone out. Otherwise, you, you otherwise you won't get your brain done. Yeah. Good. That's that's very practical. Thank you. Mourn, fast, pray, confess, receive God promises, and be specific in your asking um, as God uh, multiplies. All that you did, all that you do as you did for Nehemiah. Uh, so as we... Uh, no, I, I just want to add to that, that we're doing all of those things. I think one of the things that sometimes hinder us from doing what we know we're supposed to do is that we allow people's opinion. Ah, people, we're distracted by people's opinion. opinion yes. what people think you're, you're, you're qualified to, to do. do. Well, I, I might be qualified, but if God appointed me... That's right. Oh. Uh huh. Back off and shut up a lot of Holy Spirit. Use. That's what happens. Yeah. 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 The whispering of the enemy in your ear. Yeah. That's really. Yeah. And who, who, whose opinion you really appreciate. And they make it dead wrong. You don't appreciate some of them. I just want to say yes. to, to start with baby steps. We don't have faith. We think we don't have faith to go up a mountain. What if we have faith as a mustard seed? If we just start and just do something, trusting for something, and when he gets the, gives us the answer, we claim the victory, take another step, and we grow in our faith. There we go. Take a must have seen step faith of faith. All right, let's uh, let's pray together. Uh, folks need to get back to work and we want to honor that. I want to close your time together and I want you to pray as a group there. Yes, this is your new family. Invite someone, don't come without someone tomorrow. Invite a friend and family. Remember, I think you'll be blessed by uh, more of what God has for us. Um, you, 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 you can keep those, but bring them back. Because I'd like to explain to you what's in here. 
There's some really good resources that are here uh, that you need to know about. And so, so bring it back. You can leave them in the room, right? Can we leave them in the room? Yep, it's in, um, recognize who God is, confess who you are, call on God's promises, and ask God for specific help. Uh, you want to pray that this week? You have now the app. Does everybody download the app? Did everybody download the app? Okay, you got the app. So your assignment, your homework assignment, if you should choose Mission Impossible, everybody needs to get and download it because we're going to talk about uh, day one, amen, of cause. And I want to get your opinion on what, what happened and what God said to you, amen, in that time alone of the Lord. I'm going to put it back up here. Thank you. I will. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's called Paul. So pray, and um, we're going to end our time together. And I will see uh, you tonight. Uh, um, bring someone with you, really. Um, don't just enjoy the meal by yourself. Invite a family member. Or invite an unsaved person on the street. I don't care. Bring someone with you. I'm going to talk about tomorrow the one. We'll share a little bit about that. Uh, but uh, get ready and bring someone with you tonight. I think um, they will be blessed. All right, go ahead and let's commence prayer at this time.